Welcome back. This time we're going to start talking about operators. Uh, we're going to start with a couple operators you know and look at some integer error tricks uh, or concerns. I know we've done this like earlier today we talked about integer error. Last time we talked about integer This will be the last time we talk about integer error uh, and then we'll move on with life. Uh, so the first thing I'll mention is that there are a lot of different operators uh, on this table that you see here. Uh, we're only going to talk about a couple of them this time, then some more next time. This chart isn't just a chart of all the operators. It actually is important. And what it is is it shows the precedence um, of how things get applied. So you're used to this, right? You took, you took math and whatever third grade or something that talked about um, <clears throat> rules on the order of operations. Um, and that simply says if you have this here, you know, 8 minus 3 times 2 plus 1, it says that, hey, multiplication, um, its priority is quite a bit higher uh, than addition and subtraction. So it's going to happen first, right? So the first thing that's going to happen is this. And then after that, you're going to be left with a, a minus and a plus. Things that are within the same block um, mean that they are just evaluated left to right. So the minus actually happens next. Uh, so there's a 2 plus a 1, um, and that's how this thing becomes 3. Of course, if you use parentheses, then, you know, everything's out the window, right? So if you put parentheses around those two, hey, those definitely happen first. Um, you know, times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Uh, so parentheses change everything. But without parentheses, uh, these rules happen uh, to define the order. All right, we're supposed to be talking about errors, not order of operations. So let's look at some common errors with uh, operators and integers. The most common error, without a doubt, is this guy here. Uh, so we have uh, y is equal to 3 fourths times uh, 20. Of course, you would love for this to be 15, right? Um, it is not. Uh, the reason is, is because integers um, result in integers. So we have 3 divided by 4. 3 divided by 4, you know, you would like to think that it's going to be this, this number here. Uh-uh. Uh, it's an integer. Um, integers truncate, uh, which means they just throw away whatever fractional will part. It does not round up to 1. It truncates and it goes to 0. So this is really uh, 0 times 20. Uh, turns out 0 times 20 is 0. So the answer to this question is y equals 0. How do you fix that? How do you want that to not happen? So it turns out that one way you can fix this particular one is if you had just written the order different, uh, things would have just worked out better. So one trick with integers is that you do the division last. Uh, so this would be 60 divided by 4. Uh, 60 divided by 4, that is 15. So if we had just written it out differently, so change that order, um, it would have totally worked. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind that order is important when you're doing integer math. Typically you do like all your multiplication first, um, you know, you get the number bigger and bigger, then you divide last. That doesn't always work either though. So let's look at one where that doesn't work. So here someone heeded my advice. Uh, they said, yeah, let's do our multiplication first. All right. And then we'll do our division last. And it's like, great. Trouble is, um, you know, this, I mean, you'd like for it to be whatever. This should, you'd love for this to be 50. Um, I assure you it's not going to be 50. And the reason is <clears throat> the number 100, the computer's going to look at it and say, hey, I, I can store that as a char. Uh, it's going to look at the number 8 and it says, hey, you know, I can temporarily make that a char and I can temporarily make that a char. Um, it turns out that whenever you have a char times a char, it says, hey, they, they'll, they'll go together and they'll be a char and everything will be fine. I'm not sure why it makes that choice, but it does. Um, so this is 800, which, um, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's too many characters, right? Like it, it goes outside the range. Uh, so let's just kind of say it looks, um, I don't know, something like that. It looks something like that. The top ones are just going to get thrown away, however many they are. Uh, the bottom ones are going to remain. I believe when I did this before, the bottom ones were the number 32. Uh, so it does um, 100 times 8 and it gets 32, which you're like, oh, 100 times 8, that's 32, huh? Uh, divided by 16, uh, this is going to give you, I believe, y is equal to 2. And the problem is um, that step was too high, right? So it assumed it was trying to use a char, uh, it got too high, things went bad. 
there are ways you can fix it. Um, so this one, just order of operations won't fix it. I'm gonna wait just a little bit and we're gonna fix this one in a minute. Let's show you one more uh, before we show you how to fix them both. This is this is the last evil thing the microcontroller is gonna do to you. But for some reason, I this one feels the most evil to me. I don't know. Um, so it's just 100 plus 100 plus 100. How hard could that be? It's being saved into an int. An int can hold up to 32,000. Um, so you're like, please tell me that's going to be 300 because an int can hold 300, no problem. Um, like it, it's so evil, I've almost got to go do it, right? So let's just let's just take a look. So I typed it in here. I made Dave. I said Dave is an integer. That's clear. I said Dave is 100 plus 100 plus 100, and then I print it out. Um, so please, please be 300. I don't know how good your eyes are, uh, but it says 44. And you're like, 44? The reason is, is because it looked at this one, this one, and this one. It said, hey, this is small. This could be a char, this could be a char, this could be a char. These two together, uh, they can be a char. So it did 100 plus 100, um, and you would think that it would, it would get 200, but it actually got negative 56. <clears throat> Um, and then it did negative 56 plus 100, uh, and that is 44. And then it assigned it to an integer, which has plenty of space for it. It turns out that if this one right here had just been like 1,000, then it would have said, ah, this, this number right here is an integer. It's got to be an integer. Um, a char plus an integer, well, we've got to promote that. It'll just use promotion, and it'll become an int. And then it'll have an int times uh, another character, and that'll become an int. So comically, if the number had been 1,000 plus 100 plus 100, that would work. Um, and it would actually say, you know, 2,200. Let's go look at it, just because I haven't done it in a while. Uh, so if we wanted to, uh, to just change this first one, I'm pretty sure that if this one was just 1,000, um, then all of a sudden everything would have gone better, and it would have do 2,200, and it could do that one fine. Um, Sorry, 1,200. Uh, I could I could learn to do math. Um, and it's because it, it had to use an int here, and then when it did an int plus a char, that was okay. Um, and then the result was an int plus another char, and that was okay. But man, like that one feels the most evil. All right, let's talk about some fixes to, this, fixes to these issues. Uh, one of the most important fixes that you can use, um, it's what's called a cast. Um, a cast, it kind of has this crazy type symbol thing going on. It is an operator. It's probably not an operator you're used to unless you've done a lot of programming. Um, but what it does is quite simple. It just converts it from one type uh, into another type. So it, it's fancy, it sounds, sounds elaborate, um, but it's really pretty easy. And so for example, let's say you had um, my ints, kind of hard to read there, is 14.8. Um, obviously, you couldn't assign 14.8 uh, to an integer directly, so instead you just cast it. And the way it works is you just you say the variable type that you want um, in front of the number, um, and then it will convert uh, this whole thing into an integer. Whenever it does a conversion from a float to an integer, it it does what's called truncate. So it just throws it away, right? I don't care if it's 0.99999, it doesn't matter, truncate. So this will give you uh, 14. So that's kind of the answer to this question, um, is it's 14. Uh, there's all kinds of elaborate things that you can, uh, can do with these. Um, so just to kind of see if you understand it, uh, let's see if you can work this example. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and work it with you. Uh, so the first is my float uh, typecast as an int, so that goes down to 14. So the first thing we get is 20. Uh, then the next is we cast it back into a float, so that becomes 20.0. 20.0 uh, 20 minus 5.2, um, sure enough, my float uh, becomes 14.8, so everything's happy there. And then uh, this one's going to show you how we can fix that earlier issue. We've got my char, which is 100, uh, which is kind of hard to see at this point. Um, but we typecast it to an int, which means that it has plenty of space. Um, so it's an integer for 100, um, which is nice, plus the 
another integer for 100, um, this actually fixes the problem. So those are the, uh, the four numbers, uh, uh, three numbers that you should have hopefully come up with. So we can use that casting trick to, uh, to fix these other things. This one is better fixed um, by converting the order. But if you, if you just like really didn't want to, uh, you could do math um, an entirely floating point. And then after you kind of finish the math, uh, you typecast the whole thing back into an integer. And that would totally work. It is extremely inefficient. Like it would be like 200 times slower um, to do this as compared to, you know, rearranging it. Um, but honestly, 200 times slower, it's like two microseconds versus 800 or, you know, 400 microseconds. It's still less than a snap, right? So it is ludicrously slower uh, to do this, but people use this trick all the time. They do their math and floats, and then they just convert it back uh, when they're done. A better trick, though, is to, um, this can't be a char, but it could be an int. So it actually would totally work uh, to just convert 100 into um, an integer and then divide by 16. And this would be fine uh, because it would be the integer um, 800, which would be no problem storing as an integer, uh, divided by 16, which would also get promoted to an integer, and this would result in 50. So uh, this fix is way faster um, than converting them all to floats. You can actually do it even a little more elegant, um, and that is you can also make a literal into a long by adding an L at the end. It kind of looks crazy at first, I know. Um, but if you did this 100 L, um, that essentially forces it to be a long, which is a trick. I mean, we've, we've had to do that so much that people just added this L at the end to make it a long. Um, and then it's a long 800, which, I mean, a long could be like, you know, 10 characters, so it, it definitely fits. And so just adding an L there uh, fixes that problem. So the last one um, with this 100, there are two good ways to fix it. Uh, one is to use an integer, which is more efficient. Um, the other way is to make the first one be a long. Um, so this one uses 16-bit math, this one uses 32, so this one is officially faster. Um, but this one is, you know, less to type. <laughs> um, and when I say it's uh, faster, it's like, you know, twice as fast, not 200 times as fast. So to be honest, the less to type sometimes wins. All right, so that's all I wanted to tell you about um, casting and um, some integer errors that come up and how casting can help fix them. I'll see you next time where we talk about a bunch more operators.